This video is actually part of a series of lectures that are in a class entitled the MBTI Learning Styles, the 16 Personalities. You can access this course at udemy.com, teachable.com, or thinkific.com. You can also find more information at studentsuccessspace.com, which is our website, and the information is in printed format on Amazon in both a paperback and Kindle versions. I'm going to start our investigation by looking at the ENTJ, extroverted, intuitive, thinking, judging. Now remember, they're part of that visionary pair, intuition plus thinking. They're someone who likes change. They're going to have a vision and they really value logical arguments, competence, and even independence. Let's look at the general description of these kind of people. They're frank, decisive, they're leaders, they quickly see illogical and inefficient procedures or policies, kind of like a process engineer, right? They develop and implement comprehensive systems that are gonna solve organizational problems. And they like long-term planning and goal setting. They're well-formed, well-read, and they like to expand their knowledge and they are very forceful in presenting their ideas. People tend to see them as very direct, challenging, even decisive, but they also see them as objective, fair, and even stimulating at times. Let's look at how frequent they are. There are only 1.8% 1 1 of the total population is an ENTJ. I happen to be married to one of those. And I'm telling you, it is enjoyable to be with someone of this personality type because they are directive and decisive. I like what my husband says, what you see is what you get. And that really describes this personality. What you see is what you get. Their question is, will this help me to solve a problem? Because remember, they really enjoy solving problems because they're innovative theorists and planners. They want to have a solution. Let's look at some of their learning styles. They're highly analytical and they enjoy theory, but they will search for active applications and practical applications for their information. Because they absorb it so quickly, they really are intrigued by ideas and theories and they're constantly looking for more information. They value competency and mastery. They have great respect for people who can master information. So they're gonna always search out for creative and innovative ways, even original solutions for problems. Now, the thing about ENTJs is they tend to be perfectionistic. They are going to uh, acquire all the information they can and then they want it applied in the right way. Perfectionistic, right? They are abstract thinkers and they're motivated by achievement. They enjoy being in charge. They are natural leaders. Why are they so naturally leader? Because they're analytical, logical, decisive, and clear. People look to them to make the decisions, especially the hard ones. Now, in a classroom environment, they really prefer to have things organized and structured because they like to be able to depend upon things. They're critical thinkers and they're really more task oriented. They like to be able to do things and consider it done. Now, due to these attributes, they need some clear objectives. They like to know what's expected of them. They like the social part of their learning environment, especially when they have group work that is really effective. If you have an efficient group, then it works in a way to really emphasize and improve their learning. They love that part because they need that personal involvement. They like competition, collaboration, and participation. And remember, they really do enjoy that problem solving piece because they are conceptual and global thinkers. People tend to look at these people and think of them as being very objective, fair, and stimulating. So because of that, they are usually most comfortable when they know the expectations of what is required of them. They're leaders, they like theory, and they like competition, but they really prefer competition against oneself, occasionally against others, but really against oneself. They like being the center of attention, and they really participate in a structured learning environment. They like that participation piece, especially if someone can provide participation and structure. Now, they're least comfortable in observing Socratic methods, solitary work, detail work, without any kind of a conclusion. They really get frustrated when things are not brought to an end and having too many options without exploring a situation fully. 
Now, when this happens and they're uncomfortable, they really can become overly impersonal and critical. They can be intrusive and even really start barking out orders without really listening because they are uncomfortable and they've experienced some stress. Let's look at their classroom. So ENTJs need a classroom which is structured and organized. So as an instructor, be sure to approach each class time prepared to teach. Have an agenda and know exactly what you're going to discuss. Blue's taxonomy is a very valuable resource when you create ob objectives for this person. Be sure to include expectations and guidelines as well, and especially when you organize groups, because that will use their time more efficiently. And remember that ENTJs like their time to be used efficiently. They like to have additional resources and sources, not so they can prove the validity of what you're saying, but because they really want to dive into more depth into the information. Now, they don't really need a close relationship with their instructor, but they do like it and they really do prefer a personalized feedback, but it needs to be done in a timely manner. If you wait till long, they're going to assume that you have forgotten or you don't really know what you're thinking about. So their instructors really have to be competent. Again, avoid that Socratic method when you're teaching because it makes you as an instructor look like you don't know what you're talking about. As a learner, remember to create some learning goals and make sure that you have objectives for yourself. Even be sure to include some rewards. Be competitive with yourself. If it took you 10 minutes last time, maybe it'll only take you eight this time, or maybe you can learn more. Create a study space that really works best for you. So if you like to be with a lot of people, create a space where there's a lot of people or when there's no people. And don't forget to track what works best. For instance, if you like to study with interruptions or a particular writing tense, utensil, things like that, those are important things to track. Look for practical applications and get to know your instructor. Be sure to take time to meet with them and tell them how valuable you find their feedback. Clarify any instructions and also seek for wisdom from your instructor, especially on the most efficient study methods. They enjoy being able to share what they know, especially anything that's not related to the theory or what they're teaching in class. Organize some study groups, but be sure to organize some guidelines beforehand so you can assist each other in working more efficiently together.